Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Mark chapter 14. We're going to be starting verse 32 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, verses 32 to 42 are speaking about Jesus is praying in Gethsemane. Now, before we get into verse 32, I want to say that neither the Gospels of Matthew, nor Mark, nor Luke give this the great discourse of John chapters 14 to 17. John chapters 14 to 17 are believed to have been spoken uh, at the Passover, not, of course, not while they're eating, but after they ate, uh, in the upper room uh, before they left for uh, the Mount of Olives. So whenever you read John chapters 14 to 17, understand that those words were pretty much spoken in the upper room after the meal before they left for the Mount of Olives. Now, Verse 32 says, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I shall pray. <clears throat> now Gethsemane, the name means oil press. And there was an olive garden there at Gethsemane. And there was an oil press there also. Now the exact location of this garden is not known, but we do know that this garden of Gethsemane was on the Mount of Olives and it faced Jerusalem. And Judas also knew about it because Jesus had gone there a number of times with his disciples and that's why Judas led the uh, people, led the soldiers to Jesus in Gethsemane because he knew Jesus would be there. Now, Verse 33 says, and he took, he takes with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. Now, this Greek word for sore amazed is ekthambeo. And the prefix ek intensifies this word. And it means, ekthambeo means greatly amazed or terrified or completely upset. All right, now, and then it says also in verse uh, 33, to be very heavy. So Jesus was sore amazed and very heavy. And heavy, this Greek word is ademaneo, ademaneo. And it means to be troubled or distressed or to be almost overwhelmed. Now, verse 34 says, And he said to them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful. All right? It's exceeding sorrowful unto death. Now, this Greek word for exceeding sorrowful is perilupos. And peri, the prefix, means around. And lupe means to grieve or to sorrow. So basically, it, we picture Jesus as that he was, Jesus was surrounded by grief, that grief was coming at him from all sides. So Jesus says to his disciples, my soul is surrounded by grief. It's like a, from every, every side, I'm experiencing grief upon my soul. And then he says, exceeding sorrowful unto death. And the amazement, the heaviness, and the great sorrow was just, was, was to such an extent that he almost died. Jesus wasn't lying here. Jesus wasn't lying. Or he wasn't exaggerating either. He says, he says, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. It's almost like this, 
this, the ex, what he was experiencing at that, the pressures that he was experiencing at that time in the Garden of Gethsemane was almost killing him. This is why Jesus prayed. He, this is the reason why he prayed that this cup, this cup would pass from him. Because Jesus was paying for our sins and dying in the place of all humanity, the sufferings that Jesus experienced were of a greater degree than if one person only paid for their own sins. Jesus was paying for the sins of the whole world. He wasn't just paying for, for you know, one person's sins. This is why he's experiencing these great pressures in the Gethsemanes while he's praying. God laid on Jesus the chastisement of all of our peace. And it pleased God to bruise him for all of mankind. And his soul was an offering for all sins. You can read that in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 and 10. Now, verse 35 says, And he went forward a little bit and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Now, the Bible says that Jesus, he went forward a little and he fell on the ground. Now, this Greek word for fell is in the imperfect tense, and it means that Jesus fell down several times. He didn't just fall down once. He fell down, then he got up, then he fell down again. The pressures of this, this grief and the, the, the perilupo surrounding him and, and the, the, of what's coming upon him, he's falling down, right? Peter remembers the struggle that Jesus was going through in the garden and he tells Mark about it. This is, Mark is writing this. Remember, Peter was there. Who was with Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane? Peter, James, and John. Peter saw it. Peter was, was one of the three, <laughs> three invited guests to go with him. And Peter saw him. Peter saw Jesus going away from the three of them, falling and getting up, falling down and getting up again. Fall, we don't know how many times, falling several times. Peter, Peter tells John Mark when Mark is writing the gospel, he, uh, maybe not while he's writing it, but he tells John Mark about it. And later, when Mark writes this gospel, he remembers what Peter said because Peter saw it. Peter saw it. So Mark here is writing what Peter saw. And it says here in verse 35, he says, it fell, he fell on the ground and he prayed. He prayed. And this Greek word for prayed is also in the imperfect tense. That means he kept on praying as he was falling. Jesus is praying and he's falling. He's praying and he's falling. Because he's going, to, he's going to shed his blood for the sins of this world. I mean, can you imagine the intensity of, of, of the, the attacks upon Jesus' life to, to kill him in Gethsemane before he gets to the cross? This is what the enemy was trying to do. He was trying to kill Jesus before he gets to the cross so that mankind would not be saved. And then he says in verse 35, he says, and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. The hour, the time of his present suffering in this garden, this hour would pass from him. What is it that Jesus wants to pass from him? And we're going to see this in the next verse. He says, he says, that if it were, he's praying, he's going, and he's, and he's falling, and he's praying, Father, please let this hour pass from me. 
and he, and, and he gets up and he falls again. Please, Father, let this hour, this time in Gethsemane, let it pass from me. I need to get to the cross. Don't let me die here. I need to get to the, let this hour pass from me. Verse 36, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. He says, take away this cup. What is this cup? Now, some think, seem to think that the cup that Jesus is referring to is his death on the cross. That Jesus was having second thoughts about dying on the cross. The suffering and the pain and being forsaken by God was beginning to look like something that Jesus didn't want to experience. But this can't be what the cup was. It can't be that Jesus is saying, Lord, if there's any other, and I've heard this, if there's any other way, I don't, you know, to save mankind, don't let me go to the cross. No, no. Listen, Luke chapter 9, verse 50. Look, let's read Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Luke 9, 51 says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received. What did he do? What did Jesus do? He what? Steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. When it came time for Jesus to die on a cross, what did he do? He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Mark chapter 10, verses 33 and 34 Jesus already told his, his disciples, right? Jesus already told his disciples that he was going to go to the cross and die on the cross for them and for, for all of us. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, what? But to minister and to what? And to Give his life a ransom for many. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 24. John 12, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies... It brings forth much fruit. John chapter 12, verse 27. 12, 27 says, Now is my soul troubled, but what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Listen. Jesus never prayed to God to keep him from the cross. I know preachers preach that. I know it's, it's very well spoken of that, you know, Jesus, when he prayed, let this cup pass from me, he was talking about, he wasn't talking about the cross. Jesus was not talking about the cross when he said, let this cup pass from me. Jesus came to die on the cross. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He was going to, to the cross. The cross was why Jesus came. Jesus would not question or contradict God's plan that was predetermined before the foundation of the world. Re Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. Some also think that, that this was, was, was Jesus' humanity speaking out of fear of the cross. I've heard that also. Well, this wasn't really Jesus speaking. It was his humanity. His humanity didn't want to go to the cross, right? 
Now, listen, at this time, Jesus' humanity was over was overcoming his deity, right? This is what they say. His humanity is speaking. Now his humanity is overcoming his deity. And the fear of the cross it was the result, right? You're, his humanity was afraid of the cross, and now his humanity is speaking. Because of Jesus' humanity and, and deity were inseparably united, it was not possible for one to act without the other, right? How could Jesus' in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, Jesus is the God-man. Deity came into humanity, and they were, they, they were one. And therefore, Jesus' humanity could not speak outside of his deity. Listen, was Jesus schizophrenic? Would, would his humanity speak one time and then his deity speak another? He's not schizophrenic. No, he's in complete control of himself. The cup that Jesus was praying for to be delivered from was a premature physical death in the Garden of Gethsemane. Luke chapter 22 and verse 44 states that Jesus was sweating great drops of blood. Either it was because of an attack from Satan or because of great anguish he was experiencing, but but maybe, or maybe it was from both. Maybe it was from an attack from Satan's kingdom. Maybe it was also from the pressures of, of what he was about to experience on the cross. Maybe it was from both, but Jesus did not want to die before he made it to the cross. The cross was why he came. Jesus wasn't praying, deliver me from the cross. And God, you know, can you make up some other plan to save them uh, so that I don't have to go to the cross? But you know what? If you can't, that's all right. I'll go there anyways, but I really don't want to. I mean, is that really what people think? Really? That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that Jesus came for the purpose of the cross. Listen, to die anywhere or by any other means before the cross would not have paid for our sins. It was predetermined that it had to take place on the cross. It was predetermined by God in eternity past that Jesus had to die on the cross and that for Jesus to die anywhere else or by any other means before the cross would not pay for our sins. Hebrews 12, 2 says that because Jesus saw the joy ahead of him of people being saved by his crucifixion, he willingly went to the cross in obedience to the Father. Right? Jesus willingly went to the cross because of the joy that was set before him. He saw multitudes and multitudes of people throughout history be giving their life to Christ and becoming saved for that joy, for that joy to be able to spend eternity with these people. He went to the cross. Listen, listen, we do not worship a Lord who gets weak and wimpy when times get hard. Do you want to worship a Lord who has second thoughts about suffering for you? Really? Come on, seriously, really? Do you want to worship a Lord who has second thoughts, who's now succumbing to fears? That would make me, listen, that would make me feel real secure in that kind of Lord. Right? I know I, gee, 
Father, I know I came to die on a cross, but now I'm not really so sure I want to do it. Can you help me through it? I mean, do you want to serve that kind of savior that has second thoughts? That wants to wiggle, somehow wiggle out of going to the cross and dying for our sins? If he had thoughts of turning back, then what about the future? Or what about going forward? Can you really trust him? If the, the Lord that you worship is a Lord that had second thoughts in the Garden of Gethsemane about dying on the cross for your sins, do you really want to worship him? Come on, do you? No, no, no. I tell you what, the Lord I worship, he came. He came to die on the cross. He set his face like a flint towards Jerusalem. He's going. He's going as a lamb set for the slaughter. As one who's sent by God. He doesn't have second thoughts about going to the cross. When he says, let this cup pass from me. Let this hour pass from me. And he's praying and he's falling down. He's, he's praying, God, keep me alive till I get to the cross. He's not praying that the cross would be would be done away with and God would figure out some other way to save us. No, he's praying, God, get me there. Not keep me from there, but get me to the cross. Don't let me die now. Don't let me die now because then all is doomed. All is over. They're all doomed for a lake of fire if I die now. Get me to the cross. That's what he's praying. We're going to start in verse 37 next lesson. But until then, you walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.